on Score North and scorenorth.com. You think you like football? Trent Dilfer doesn't just really like football. He loves football. Carlos High, little penetration. Boom, and then the spin move. We've seen power. We've seen acceleration by Carlos Hyde. Welcome, NFL, to Carlos Hyde. The bell cow back for the San Francisco 49ers. Football! Football! Bell cow. Football! 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 A bell cow is a great word. Great word, dude. Old school. Bell right? Cow. It's a very bell old school. Cow. You're the bell cow running back. Get old that Bessie in cool. here to pound the rock. Football. That's right. Who's the bell cow? So I, I guess Cook is right now. Like he, he's uh, a bell cow. Is he a uh, bell he's cow? He's not a bell cow. Yeah. I don't know if he's a bell cow, man. I feel like Asiata was a bell cow. Yeah. Yeah. Asiata was. Even like other ones, like Sa- Saquon Barkley seems like a bell cow. He doesn't, he doesn't he really look get involved. Look up bell cow. Yeah. Wait, wait. Really get I'm, I'm going to look up bell yeah. cow. I'm gonna look up Bell. I always I feel like if, if you if yeah. you have an injury history, it kind of feels like you can't be a Bell. No, that makes a, sense. I got you. Hold on a second. My, I'm, that might be my own. I, I think it's I, 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 might, might be might be a youth thing. I'm gonna but, look um, up. It seems like he's just three, three, four yards, three yards, four yards, three yards, straight line power, bang, bang, bang. Mm. Okay. A bell cow is not surprisingly a cow with a bell attached to its neck, especially a lead cow. Slang. Lead cow. L- leader, the bell cow in country politics. The lead cow. So I get football. So I guess it'd be if it's the lead, if it's like the lead cow, I guess Cook does qualify because he's the lead. I guess so. Feels All like, right. but yeah, I I'm with you. I I feel like a bell cow should be just a big guy that eats up carries and never gets hurt and like carries guys six yards on his back yeah judd is the bell cow of score north really yep. and he's been for a long time this is purple daily mackie judd our executive producer declan goff presented by tcl enjoy more of what you love with tcl and we start out with i guess some some potential bad news here we got a few things we're going to pecking order on today's show espn.com pass protection rankings but ian rapaport rap sheet from nfl media says Vikings defensive tackle Michael Pierce suffered a calf injury while training and his availability for the start of camp is in doubt, Source said. While he could end up missing time to begin camp, it's not expected to keep him off the field to begin the season. So we we actually haven't seen proof of Michael Pierce in a Vikings uniform like on a game day yet, even though he's been with the team for a year and a half. So when you guys saw this, how, how like what's your nervous scale, 1 to 10? You know, we hear about these little injuries sometimes. It's like, oh, he's, he's just a little dinged up. And then all of a sudden, yep. you know, your third preseason game and the guy hasn't practiced yet. So yeah. what's what's your level of alarm here, I guess? Well, first of all, keep in mind, Daniil Hunter was just a tweak, okay? So, like, let's not <laughs> let's not worry too much. Just a tweak. It's nothing more than a tweak. Yeah. We should, oh, all, we should, we should, we should all have some sort of, like, you know, I think guard up because of the way that they characterized his. I, yes. I definitely have flashbacks of that, right? Oh, yeah, he's just he's just getting a sip of water over there. He's got a little tweak. And <laughs> he's just in the. He's fine. practicing special teams trick plays. Don't worry about him. <laughs> he'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, my first thought was this, and we talked about the defensive tackles last week as well, and I said the exact same thing. Um, this is why the Sheldon Richardson signing is important. Yep. Uh, because I don't necessarily fully trust the depth behind um, Tomlinson and Pierce at this point in time, or I didn't until they got Richardson back on his deal. And now I think that you have created, ideally, Pierce and Tomlinson play on first and second down, and ideally, I guess, Tomlinson gets some pressure, although I don't know, because we also discussed this last week, I don't know how consistent that pressure is going to be. But the nice thing is, Sheldon, who is still an effective player, can come in and either be a three-down guy or a pass rush specialist, but he gives you a veteran presence that you sorely, sorely lacked last year. So I feel better about the Pierce news, not because it's good he's hurt, but because I do think that despite the fact that Sheldon would qualify more as a three technique than a nose tackle, if Push comes to shove. I think you can move Tomlinson pretty easily to nose tackle where he's played previously. Yeah. And so you've got some insurance here that doesn't make this as daunting. I would like to see Pierce play, though. Yeah, I mean, this, this is going to be 
probably an overreaction, but I, I, I'm kind of more curious to see Sheldon Richardson get more snaps with one of the nose tackles than I am to see the two nose tackles shoehorned in and one of them as a three technique. So, again, I don't want Michael Pierce to be hurt, but I feel like the Vikings kind of put themselves in a weird situation where, all right, well, we already have Michael Pierce, but then Tomlinson was available, and they both are nose tackles, but we'll just sort of make Tomlinson a three technique because he's kind of done that before. Sheldon Richardson actually makes more sense as a like as a – I don't think he's like an 850, 900 snap guy, but um, like there's always going to be a rotation to, to some extent. But however it plays out, to your point, like this is why you sign depth. This is why you go out and get an extra cornerback in Bashad Breeland, right? This is why you go and bring in Mackenzie Alexander, why you bring in Sheldon Richardson. They have a couple, and I, I'm probably foreshadowing um, some conversations we're going to have from now until the start of training camp about depth, but the Vikings have a couple positions where they can withstand injuries and a couple where they can't. And I think defensive tackle is one of the positions where they can withstand a thing here and there, a calf at the beginning of training camp, uh, more than, say, like left defensive end <laughs> or <laughs> safety yeah. at this point, right? So, mm-hmm. all right, De- Declan, are you freaking out at all about this Michael Pierce calf injury? or what's I'm, I'm not freaking. Um, I think it's like a 4 out of 10 scale. I want to see Michael Pierce play. And, and you know what Judd, Dr. Judd always says, you know, neck injuries scare me. You know, Judd doesn't like neck injuries, and yeah, rightfully I so. I, I, for, I, I hear yeah. it. Calf injuries freak me out. Maybe I'm jaded because of Josh Donaldson. <laughs> mm. But calf injuries and a big dude like Michael Pierce, yeah? like that's a tree, man. You're chopping down the tree right there. It's a little worrisome for me. So I want to see the dude play because I do think he's an athletic freak, and I want to see how he's using Mike Zimmer's defense. Um, but at least, yes, there is depth there at the Sheldon Richardson signing that doesn't make this as scary or daunting as it would be in a no- normal situation. Calves and hamstrings, right? Yes. Especially these big dudes that are just— Because they nag you. Yeah. Like they nag you and nag you, and then it's like, it's fine, and then it's like, no, it's not fine, right? That's yeah. the problem. They come back and bite you continually. Um but yeah, I, I also think we need to keep in mind that um, that the mad scientist Zim, these two guys in the middle of the defensive line are because of that Saints game. That Saints game put him, he was basically like, no one's going to run on us ever again. <laughs> and I mean, that's why. I, I'm convinced. I don't want them if, to gain another yard. They will if, remember the night they played the Vikings. If Alvin Kamara on Christmas Day doesn't absolutely run over you, which he did. I mean, he embarrassed them. I'm not sure the Tomlinson signing happens like it did. But, I mean, Zim is convinced that if I get two of the biggest, baddest, most in-shape fat guys I can possibly get, (laughs) no one's going to run up the A-gap ever again against me. Come on! so true. Yeah. And listen, if Zim's plan goes awry, he probably gets fired. But the good news is Burnsville Heating and Air is hiring. So you can actually rest easy if you're one of the Vikings coaches that might have a job on the line or a front office member. The pressure is high, but there's a fallback option for you. Burnsville Heating and Air Conditioning. Um, and they're hiring all levels of experience, apprentices, leads, finishers, and equipment setters. And they have an immediate need for you, full-time work opportunities. And even though the company is Burnsville Heating and Air, they've got job sites within 10 to 20 minutes, most likely, of wherever you live. So you don't have to necessarily live near Burnsville. Uh, they're also giving out up to $2,000 sign-on bonuses. So full-time, year-round work, lots of overtime opportunities. If you need a reset year, if you're a football coach, or if you're just looking for employment, go to BurnsvilleHeating.com and click Careers. BurnsvilleHeating.com and click Careers. All right, Judd Zolgad has brought to the table here this mm-hmm. week's pecking order, and we're going just we're going beyond the Vikings. We're going to include the Vikings in uh, a scope of the NFC North. So, Judd, set up this week's pecking order for us, if you will. So it's not going to be. It's not going to be in order, for instance, of my division predictions for the NFC North. But what it's going to be is what I perceive to be the main storyline for each team. And in fact, I'm going to skip the Vikings. If you guys want to throw out the Vikings, that's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to alphabetically go through the other three teams in the division. And wait, are you give skipping you, the Vikings or are you going to wait till the end to and go to the give Vikings? you... I'm going to I'm going to go through the other three teams and then react also to how it impacts 
the Vikings and ah, what scares me and what doesn't. So I'm not necessarily going to get at the heart of the Vikings issues and storylines because there will be plenty of time for that and we'll do that a ton in the coming week. What I'm going to get at is what I perceive to be the main storyline with each of the teams in the division besides the Vikings. And we could talk about how that impacts the Vikings as well, because it uh, certainly could. I like okay? that little, little Vikings spin on mm-hmm. these. I like it. Or a Viking Rick, show. Rick, yeah. Rick Spielman likes it, too. Mm-hmm. Let's start in the Windy City. The uh, Chicago Bears. The main storyline is actually revolves around a guy who supposedly, and I guess I believe this, on opening day is not going to start. QB2. QB2. And that storyline is, when is... QB2, Justin Fields, going to become QB1. And is there any expectation that if he does have a good camp, you know, I mean, he comes out in the preseason slinging it around, that the Red Rifle could become QB2 very quickly because Justin Fields, and this this not only, gentlemen, goes towards the 2021 season, this goes towards the future. Justin Fields, if the Bears got this right, could be the answer to a problem that has haunted this franchise Essentially, since before any of our births, and I was born in 1969, Justin Fields. I saw a photo on Instagram this weekend of QB2 for the Bears with his shirt off at some, like, off-season practice. It. It's impressive. And, oh, my God. Like, is it Q- QB2% body fat? Like, QB here to make me feel inadequate as a human yes. being? Like, that dude is... Just, just keep your shirt on. Chiseled. Just ridiculous. don't ever look I, at yourself. Like, hey, I've been riding the Peloton. I had my shirt off on I Saturday. Like I was fine. Pop- I was great. QB three. I was great. Were I don't you just know. Just like you're at a bar about. with your shirt off. No, I was. No, there was a pool party. I was. I was. At, I was at a pool. Okay. Well, you're okay. not. You're not fat at all. No, but I've, you are scrawny. Yes. So keep your shirt on. Okay. <laughs> Phil and I have some guts. Keep your shirt on. No, I mean seriously. And don't. And by the way, when you walk in front of a mirror, keep your head down. Just don't look at it. <laughs> just just I, never, I never love make my body. I don't know what you're talking about. So never wait, make eye contact so with so me. When you're, when you're brushing your teeth, you just stare down at the sink. Just I'll never keep my shirt on to brush my teeth. Okay. But like well, shower wise, never that's look. Too much information. Um, yeah. No, I'm just saying I don't look. On the Justin Fields point, I'm, yeah, I'm torn good. here on behalf of the Vikings because on one hand, I'm like, boy, the longer, like, let's say Justin Fields is set to finally be the franchise quarterback that the Bears have always hoped for, right? Well, it'd be great if they could just sit on him all year and, and Andy Dalton could could play the games against the Vikings. But the Vikings lose to far worse quarterbacks in like Bears quarterbacks than Andy Dalton, right? Like look at the list of quarterbacks. I don't have it in front of me, but I, I can tell you it includes some guys that you are ashamed to lose football games to. So mm-hmm. I think I think the Vikings struggles with the Bears throughout the years and they're about I think they're five hundred against the Bears in the Mike Zimmer era. It's not because of quarterback one way or the other. It's their defense. It's that stadium. It's prime time. It's a lot of different factors. And so I don't know. Like Mike Zimmer is also great against young quarterbacks. So I think from a quarterback perspective, I'm very comfortable with whoever the Bears put out there. It's all the other things that make me nervous on behalf of the Vikings in those games. Okay, prediction time (laughs) for both of you guys. Because it's pretty well known it's been reported by a lot of people, and I trust it. The Vikings definitely made some phone calls and inquiries and had interest in trading up in the draft to take Fields before the Bears jumped them and took yeah, him in their trade. Will the Vikings, and I'm not talking about for this year, I'm talking about just the totality of the future, will the Vikings regret the fact that they didn't be more aggressive to make that trade? Because if Fields is going to bite you, he's going to bite you big now, play him twice a year. Will the Vikings regret not being more aggressive to make a trade to take him. Dex? Because they don't have their QB of the future. The Vikings do not. I, right now, this is, me, this is not me pouring cold water. Just like, I, I can't answer that question right now. Why? Because I don't know how, I don't, I don't know if I it's trust just, Matt Nagy and, and, and Ninkum Poops at, at one Chicago Bears way to evaluate the right people. But two, he was pretty damn good at Ohio State and the Vikings had interest. The Vikings evaluators were targeting him. That's what I'm saying. So, so I, 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 I get it, but I don't, I don't think we can answer it until we know after the end of the year. I can't answer it. Um, I like Kellen Mond too, but I don't. I don't know if we can answer it. I think I don't. I oh my god! I th- I think the gap between Mond and Fields is less than the gap by which they were drafted. Okay, and so I, I like how you put that. To, to answer your question, I because th- it's all about like obviously if Justin Fields turns out to be an amazing quarterback, the answer is yes. But 
in terms of what we knew on draft day, would I rather have Christian Derrissaw and Kellen Mond or Justin Fields and shoulder shrug emoji for offensive line? The Vikings did it right, and they may have stumbled into it because it does sound like they tried to move up to Carolina's spot. They tried to move up to Detroit's spot. I think they did it right from a draft standpoint. Get the franchise offensive tackle and then get a guy that was very highly graded on a lot of boards early in the third round. What do you think, Judd? I have a bad feeling that the Vikings being the Vikings are going to regret this in large part because he's in the division now. And and I don't know that to what Dex is saying. I don't know that Nagy and the current staff is the guy to unlock fields, but I don't think they're going to ruin him necessarily. And so I do think that there is a chance that they got this right. I mean, Justin Fields to me, and Mon Cook could be good. I don't know. But the thing I like about Fields is this. I think he fits into, and if he can get the learning experience that he's going to need, I think he fits into the game today pretty well. Like, I think he's a good fit. Might not be perfect, no. but I just have a I just have a weird feeling because of how it unfolded, and he went to Chicago, and the Vikings' luck is sort of like this at times. I think they do regret it, um, and you know the problem be, the problem we're always going to talk about too if they don't win a Super Bowl is that you were that was the point in time where you were sort of stuck with Kirk, and Kirk was your guy, and so it wasn't like you had this absolute necessity to go get a QB. You slow cooked it, but if this kid turns out to be really good, you're going to say, damn. Yeah. That's my feeling. Uh, by the way, I and I did have to just pull the schedule up to see the dates here. The Vikings don't play the Bears until December 20th. So they're going to face Justin Fields. Yes. Like, the, the you know, they've got two games against the Bears in the Final Four in Chicago on Monday night, December 20th, and then at, at U.S. Bank Stadium on uh, Sunday, Jan 19th, Week 18. So there's... Almost no way that Justin Fields isn't, unless Andy Dalton is just ridiculous for some reason all season, and the Bears are winning, and like that's the only way it would happen that way. So it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be cold game on December twentieth at Chicago. Team number two, Motor City boys. We're going to the Motor City. In fact, Phil, if you would be so kind, do, do you have the ability to play me some Danny Campbell? Uh, I do, and just but but you mentioned Motor City. You know, mm-hmm. we got our own Motor City here in the Twin Cities area, a little bit north. It's in Brainerd, and it's Brainerd International Raceway. So you just oh, like you reminded you me did. of how great Brainerd International did. Raceway is the time of year. They've got more live racing coming up, July thirtieth through August first weekend here in uh, about twelve days. Moto America coming to the BIR racetrack for the first time. And they're visiting Minnesota with multiple super bike racing classes and 190 miles per hour of pure adrenaline. This is a blast, and uh, kids 12 and under even get in free. So it's time to visit the bigger, better, and faster season at Brainerd International Raceway. Ticket and camping information at BIRMN.com. Dan Campbell doesn't just like football. Dan Campbell loves football. We're going to kick you in the teeth, all right? And when you punch us back, we're going to smile at you. And when you knock us down, we're going to get up. And on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off, all right? And we're going to stand up. And then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down, all right? And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up. And then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before, before long, we're going to be the last one standing. All right, that's going to be the mentality. Football! Football, yeah! 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 Football! Yeah! Football! Yeah! Get some! Eat. This show has, the way I see it, three definite missions. One, <laughs> one is, is this. Reckless speculation. Of course, to entertain as well, right? Which which so far, I would say, on the Dan Campbell front, we have tried to entertain by playing sound bites like that because they're funny and he sounds like an idiot and it's just <laughs> hilarious. But the third thing is this show also deals in football. I mean X's and O's. I mean eating X's football. and O's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And there's a time to entertain, and then there's a time to be serious. And when you're breaking down the NFC North, that's time to get serious, boys. So storyline out of Detroit. 
Matt Patricia was a complete and utter disaster and a joke. His players couldn't stand him. He was a jerk. The fans hated him. Dan Campbell is a football-y football guy. That's very clear from the soundbite that Phil played. Uh, but so far, we've heard all the right things, and there's been no games played yet, but about Dan Campbell's approach and the players like him and that this is a very different era of Detroit football. So, here's my question. My storyline is the Lions and this coaching change, did they get it right this time? Is Dan Campbell, as much as we've joked and laughed, no. What does your sense tell you? No. There, I mean, there's no way. You can't <laughs> be like that. Like, that's not, that's position coach guy. He's position coach guy. And you need you need guys like that in the NFL, right? You need to toughen these guys up. Got to make sure our offensive line is tougher and our defensive line is scratching and clawing, right? But, like, I need a thinker. My head coach needs to be a thinker. Someone who can get up and see the 30,000-foot view of the entire season and the franchise the John Harbaugh's, the Andy Reid's, right? Like Andy Reid is very football, but Andy Reid's very cerebral. The Bill Belichick's, right? Like this guy is a total position coach clown show. And how does it <laughs> impact the Vikings? Two more wins against the Lions. That's how it impacts the Vikings. It's going to be great. Now they might lose three players to injured reserve because of these psychopaths and their biting kneecaps and stuff, but it's 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 two wins for the Vikings. That's how it impacts the Vikings. Dex? The thing is with the Lions is I can totally see now they, they do have a tough schedule to start, but I can see them jump. If they like get off to like a 3-1 and one start, right? Yes. Like, and, and they have the Niners, Packers, Ravens, Bears to start the year. Yep. If they get off to a 3-1 and one start, people are going to be eating this up, man. It, this Oh, this is so much fun. Dan Campbell has turned things around in the Motor City, right? Uh, but I, I don't. I'm with Phil. I don't buy it for a minute. I, I can see that 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 first storyline playing out, and then people uh, jumping on the Dan Campbell bagwagon. But he, he's nuts, dude. And also, Jared Goff. No, 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 no. Like you, you downgraded at, at quarterback. He's your cousin. What are you doing? Nope. Yeah, no yeah, relation. Yeah. No relation. Well, if you go back far enough, I'll bet there's. Uh, I hope not. Um, but yeah, we're both overpaid, and where one of us is good at their job, and one isn't. So yeah, it's it's he's in a difficult situation in Detroit. Difficult situation. I cannot wait to see Dan Campbell manage a clock. Also true. <laughs> and challenges. He will call. he will he will go Tyson Zim. He will throw that damn red flag every chance he gets. Yeah, like do you th- do you think that guy's thinking at all about the nuances of clock management, or is he just thinking about how his defensive tackles can gouge yes. the eyes out of the left guard <laughs> without getting flagged for a penalty, right? <sighs> All right, so the last one. We go to uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. The storyline, I know what you're all expecting me to say, by the way. I know what you're expecting me to say, but I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say it about the same position, but not the player that you expect me to talk about. Is Jordan Love ready to be the Packers quarterback? That's the main storyline. Because if Aaron doesn't show up, and I I still think there's a good chance he doesn't. Like People are like, oh, he'll show up. I'm not so sure of that. Jordan Love on day one of training camp will be QB1. And I don't think he's going to be as garbage as everyone just assumes he's going to be. But I have great confidence, just like with Justin Fields, that Mike Zimmer, before these guys are fully ready to be like franchise quarterbacks, Mike Zimmer is going to make their lives miserable. So if the division rolls out and Justin Fields is playing in the two games late in the season for the Bears and Jared Goff is playing for the Lions, and Jordan Love or Blake Bortles are playing for the Packers. Boy, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to just say 6-0 and Vikings, but like that should be four or five wins for the Vikings right there in the division. Now, even with Rodgers, I, I feel like Mike Zimmer is about 500 against the Packers, too, and most of those games have included Aaron Rodgers. So, yep. um, yeah, I, boy, dropping off from one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time to another shoulder shrug emoji. They have a good enough roster though, where they're still going to, people are just assuming and well, if Rogers doesn't show up, that's a three win team. Nah, that's a team that's going to still like, they've got enough weapons on offense. They have a really good offensive line. Their defense has gotten better. I think the deflation factor though, like if those guys are relying on Rogers, they've gone to the NFC championship game a couple years. Right. And, and just like the letdown of him not showing up or getting traded. Yes could be yes. a factor too that matters in football um so but again like 
be a good thing for Mike Zimmer if he got to go against a, another rookie quarterback. Declan? Declan? Declan. Yeah, I, I I don't buy it. I think the Packers are going to be awful. I, I know their line's good, and Devontae Adams is good. I just think that team is so heavily focused on their quarterback that if Blake Bortles or Jordan Love step in, I don't see that team winning more than five games. I think they're going to be a disaster. If Blake, wait, wait, wait. If Blake Bortles has to start, like, like, let's just say mm-hmm. he's he plays. They both play in the exhibition games. If Blake Bortles has to start, don't you have to fire Goody almost immediately? Like, if Jordan Love in year two, so like, if this was year one, I'd be like, okay, I sort of get that. But I mean, he had a year to learn. And I'm not saying that he needs to be spectacular because I don't think he'll be spectacular. But if you deem, okay, you know what? He can't start still. I mean. Yeah. I mean, to that point. So got to go. This. So two drafts ago, Aaron Rodgers had maybe dropped off a little bit, but he was still Hall of Fame, great quarterback guy. But they determined that he was cooked enough to trade up in the first round for Jordan Love. And if right. going into year two, if he's not going to beat out Blake Bortles for a starting quarterback job, like if you, and if you knew this all summer, and if you knew that one of the main reasons why Aaron Rodgers, if not the main reason, is upset with your franchise is because the GM and the front office don't keep him in the loop on stuff, why wouldn't you have just cleaned up this problem two or three months ago? Like, is it is it that hard for the Packers to admit that they were wrong? And they're already wrong. Like, Rodgers came back after they deemed him on the cliff enough to have to draft his replacement, he comes back and wins the MVP, and they well, go back to the doorstep of the Super Bowl. Like you were already wrong, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. And and you traded up to take his eventual successor. Yeah. Instead, instead of trading up to take one of what four, I believe, wide receivers or five that got drafted in the first round, including Jefferson, who was dropping at least close to you, close enough to trade up for. Like, think about that. That's the thing that amazes me. The Packer, can you imagine, again, Devontae Adams and Justin Jefferson on the field together last season with Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. Mm. What a nightmare. Yeah, well, now we now we get to watch Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen on the field together here because the Vikings, at least like for all their flaws, the Vikings the Vikings know like what position they need going into drafts most more often than not. And sometimes they reach, like, they knew they needed a center, so they drafted Garrett Bradbury three years ago, and they knew they needed a left tackle. So it's like sometimes position of need is the thing in the first round, and when you have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, (laughs) you trade up for another quarterback. I don't know, man. So, all right, well, those are are Judd's three main NFC storylines, NFC North storylines, aside from the Vikings. Um I think you nailed it. I'm trying to think of, uh, like, with the Packers, that is the storyline. With the Bears, mm-hmm. that is the storyline. So, <laughs> And with um, Detroit, that's got to be the storyline because it's, it's one of the great storylines in football right now. Yeah. Literally biting off a man's kneecaps. Mm-hmm. And maybe both of them. Oh, my God. Um, boy, that just sounds, that just sounds awful. Uh, we will have, so next week, Judd's going to be at training camp just all day, every day. We're going to have the regular Purple Daily episodes. We might even have bonus episodes. We'll do uh, camp storylines and our Mr. Mankato. And no, we're not going to change the name of it because we like alliteration. I know the Egan Everyman was maybe no. a there for a no, while. That, that's what Royce said. No. We're not, yeah. no way. So but when, the, but we, when, we, is poor, when is poor Chris Long going in the bunker? Well, we got to we got Dex. Can you reach out to Chris Long and just see what yes. his schedule's like the next week? I will. Like I said, get, I, uh, I know I know I'll get the three a.m. response when I email him at twelve thirty p.m. today. Yeah, because uh, that's how Long operates. But yes, I will email Long. Okay. And for people that are new to the show, every year going back seven or eight years on Mackie and Judd, and now on Purple Daily, we have led the Mister Mankato discussion, looking to crown the best under the radar training camp performer and in, this includes the preseason games every single year. Adam Thielen won it back in the day, Stefan Diggs won it back in the day. Now, sometimes guys like Marcus McCauley win it going back. We went back and retroactively crowned players. So, uh, it's not always a guaranteed success story. You got to put in the work after you win Mr. Mankato. But uh we'll definitely need eyes and ears from fans who are attending training camp sessions to uh to give us their first-hand reports. The interesting thing about this one, too, is, if I'm not mistaken, via our rules on this, Kellen Mond is eligible for Mr. Mankato. He is. Third-round pick. Third-round pick or later. So. 
And then we've had a couple requests for provisions, like if a guy isn't a third round pick or later or undrafted, but he's been off the radar for a while or something. But that's really third round pick or later. And then Chris Long will have the official odds report. I got to think Kellen Mond is going to be the most odds on favorite we've ever had, right? Yeah. Just because he's, he's almost a too round much for my taste. Like, I, I don't think I can pick him because it's. Too obvious. Jake Browning might be the real dark horse. Jake Browning might be your starting quarterback at some point. He's going to get probably more snaps in some of these preseason games. Getting him ready. We'll see. Um, Let's. uh, I know we were going to touch on the ESPN.com offensive pass protection rankings because we love rankings on this show. I think we do that tomorrow. We'll do a dive into that tomorrow. See where. Perfect. Where are the national pundits? putting the Vikings pass protection? Are they are they respecting the moves that they made in the draft, or are, are the Vikings going to be garbage again, according to them? So we'll do that tomorrow. But, um, yeah, all of this has been also presented by Federated. So Federated's been uh, supporting us on Purple Daily and Mackie and Judd for a number of years, and, and we thank them for that. They've also been supporting Big Brothers Big Sisters, which, uh, think about this, since 2005, the Federated Challenge supporting Big Brothers Big Sisters has raised over $41 million to help ignite the potential of our nation's youth. That's a 116-year-old one-to-one mentoring organization. And uh, and those $41 million over 15-plus years, thanks in large part to, to partners like the Minnesota Timberwolves and Lynx, Holborn Corporation, SIT Investment Associates, and more. So uh, find out more about Big Brothers Big Sisters at their website, bigbrothersbigsisters.org. And we thank you for hanging out with us on Purple Daily. Any other words of wisdom, Judd Zolgad? Not today. Tomorrow I might have more. Not today. But we are appro- we are approaching camp, and I will say this, and I say it uh, very geekily, and I'm being sincere. I have not been this excited for the start of training camp in a long time. It's Partially because the twins yeah. are terrible. But I am real no, but I, and I mean training camp drags on and and by the time that you get to the start of the season, you're basically bored of camp as Phil knows. But right now, I am jazzed for the start of training camp. I am too. It's going to be it's going to be fun. Also, this is the this is the first time that cuz training camp was so different last year, but um this is the first time that we will have had this community too on the Purple Daily podcast and YouTube channel to to hang out with all you guys. So we're pumped for it. Judd's going to be there on a daily basis. And uh, if you're not already following Score North on Instagram, we just fired up TikTok also for the first time a couple weeks ago and um, and and Twitter and Facebook as well. We're going to be just throwing content all over the place in your faces. So check us out on all those platforms. We'll see you guys tomorrow on Purple Daily.